everyone, welcome to The Watches TV. We are here in Geneva because we are meeting Brice Le Chevalier, Editor-in-Chief of GMT and also founder of the Geneva Watch Tour, an initiative that makes uh, Geneva to be discovered uh, about watches. So, Brice, can you tell me where does the idea come from? We created this tour to be able to visit Geneva while passing along 100 boutiques and 12 historical monuments linked to watchmaking. This monument behind symbolizes the entrance of Geneva uh, into the Swiss Confederation in 1814. We are now at the Rue du Rhône, the most famous watch street in the world because most of the brands have here boutique and we are in front of the most prestigious boutique, it is the Patek Philippe one. So Brice, can you tell us uh, a little bit more about this boutique? You have uh, four, four floors where you discover all the Patek Philippe collections and on the top floor, uh, it is for the best clients, you, you have an incre incredible view of the Geneva Lake and the Water Fountain. You can discover all the collection and it belongs to the family and you have an average of 100 clients entering every day over the year. So now we are in front of the Jet Dome. The Jet Dome especially is linked to watchmaking. So Brice, can you tell me why it is linked to watchmaking? Yes, actually very few people know that, but uh, even uh, this emblem of Geneva, which is a water fountain, the Jet d'eau, has uh, its uh, origin in the watchmaking foundation of uh, Geneva. Two centuries ago, it was not at this place. It was downwards the um, Rhone River, where 4,000 uh, watchmaking craftsmen use uh, the hydraulic energy of the Rhone River for their work actually because the, the hydraulic uh, water was involved in the watchmaking of keys and movements. And one day one of them had the bright idea of installing a security valve which uh, allowed the water, the overpressurized water, to rise skywards and which are up to 30 meters high. This become a spectacle for neighbors um, and uh, tourists, which led the town council of Geneva to move the Jedo in 1891 and institutionalize it as a touristic attraction. And they moved the Jedo in 1891 and made it rise to up to 90 meters now. And now it is even more powerful as it reached uh, the altitude of 1,400 meters. The water goes out at the speed of 200 kilometers and every second 500 liters of water are just ejected in the air. The flower clock is the second most photographed monument in Geneva, just after the Jet d'eau. And uh, it's composed of 6,500 flowers and uh, it features the biggest second hand of the world. It's two and a half meter long. And what is interesting to know is that this watch is uh, guided, controlled by radio. So it is really completely accurate uh, with a special uh, mechanism inside that has been developed for that purpose. To show that uh, watchmaking is present even in unexpected places, Chris brought us here at the Passage Malbuisson. So, why? This is uh, the clock of the Passage Malbuisson, and you can see there is an annual calendar. But each hour, uh, the clock provides a musical show for passers-by. Under the dial, you've got two uh, doors at each side with a procession. Uh, where 42 bronze figures and 13 horses file out. So, Brice, can you tell us about this exhibition and why the Geneva Watch Tour organizes such temporary events? We asked the photographer Christian Fall for one year long to take pictures of the watchmaking DNA in Geneva architecture and it allows uh, the people who come to Geneva and the Cité du Temps to discover 24 pictures explaining the roots of watchmaking in Geneva. So you can do your own tour or you can uh, pick up uh, one of the pocket maps that the tourist office created especially for the watch tour which show you the way uh, with the shopping side and also a more cultural side. Thank you, Brice. It was really interesting. And uh, don't hesitate if you want to know more about watches in Geneva to attend and to go through this tour. Thank you.